Thank you for joining us tonight as we, or whatever time zone it is currently as you're watching this, as we go over the dystopian rising evolution character creation. Now, last week I did go over dystopian rising evolution, and if you are unfamiliar with dystopian rising, it is a post-apocalyptic... <laughs> Dystopian Rising Evolution is a post-apocalyptic game using the Story Path system by Onyx Path Publishing. It is insanely awesome. It has the ability to be uh, mutants in the far future, and it even has a lot of cool rules. And I'm told it is one of the best or best systems to use, uh, best settings to have the Story Path system in it. Apologies for my blundering. I am a little bit tired at the moment, but I do have my purple water. <laughs> One thing I like about um, this is something that you could toss into any role playing game or LARP type event, which I am told Dystopian Rising is LARP related in some way, but uh, you can essentially get colored water like like uh anything like that and it makes it look like a futuristic drink or uh what was it toilet toilet water or something there was there was some uh interesting ling interesting uh dystopian rising dystopian rising lingo that i had to cover in the lexicon last time just need to bring up bring up the thing Dystopian Rising Interactive. Did I only open it up? <laughs> doing it live, doing it live. In Dystopia Rising Final Doubt. Open up the character sheet and I forget. Oh, I need to open up the rule book as well. Idiot. <laughs> How's everyone doing today? Double check in. I'm in the chat. People are in the chat, possibly. Oh, and I had a bunch of stuff that I was queuing up to send out. So people actually know I am broadcasting. Dystopian Rising is something that I didn't think I was going to enjoy when I first saw it. But then when I dug into it more and more, it's sort of, I've fallen in love with it. I'm. In college, I was really into the whole, um, <laughs> into the whole dystopian future stuff. Even after college, to an extent, with Fallout uh, Four and stuff like that. And this system, it it takes a lot of beats from those dystopian, dystopian novels, games, and things like that, and really does its own thing with it. Uh, if you saw last week, we covered how they are essentially, you don't play as normal humans in the, in the future. You play as basically these mutated strains and lineages. Um, as you can see in the character sheet, it says that specifically in there that for whatever reason, uh, people have mutated to the extent that they are no longer quite human but still a little bit like human. So we'll get into the character creation now. You start off as the type of character who is... Oh, am I not running? I should be running. I am live. Okay, there we go. I don't know why, but... Which was telling me that I had gone on online and then shut off. Okay. So starting off on character creation, the uh, last week we covered all the basic character types, but I'll go over them again quickly once we get into this. So there were ready-made characters set up, but why is it? Not there. There we go. Okay, so we've got 
character. Making a character. So first, to make a character, you always come up with your concept. I always like usually going with a hacker type character, though in Dystopian Rising Evolution, computers don't really exist anymore. You're pretty much going to be playing, ra not raiders, but mercenaries, it seems like. You can come up with different character concepts based on what your party's preference is. Um, you get to choose uh, two short, short term and one long term goal. These are your aspirations for your character, for what they want to do, or it could even be what your player's own goals are, because your character might not want to get into a fight with a bunch of mutants, but you might want to get into a fight with a bunch of mutants and have that as a goal that you want to hit. The paths that you have, um, which are sort of your character, um, what would be equivalent to a character class or background for other systems like Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, paths in the story path system have the you have the strain path, which reflects your character's own uh, unique history, upbringing, and mutation that allows her to survive in the wastes. Each strain represents how the character's family survived the fall and the subsequent way she views the wastes. It influences your opinions, and it may dictate the weaknesses common to that strain. So you start off with one dot in the strain path, which with these character sheets, you're not really going to see that aspect to it. I would have to double check, because I know Mr. Gon does have story path character sheets. Stopia Rise. Yeah, Mr. Gon does have them. So if you want a two-page character sheet, you can also get it from Mr. Gon. This is the character sheet that comes with the uh, drive through RPG stuff. So for path, we can choose a strain path, which we've got the various ones in Chapter 2. So we've got the devoted... Elithrite, Evolve, Gorgers, Mutants, Landsmen, Nomads, and Townies. Now, for me, I'm going to choose a Townie. This is because I'm going to try and emulate a little bit of myself in this character. And I am sort of... I'm not from a city initially, but I'm from, like, the suburbs of a big city, so I'm going to put that down there. So for character name, we'll leave it blank, but player name's Corbin. Series um, to be determined, but strain for the strain we're going to put down townie. So if I go down to the townie section of the core rule book, it's going to it's going to tell me a few things that I can take. You have your edges that are accessible, you have your skills, um, academics, close combat, subterfuge, and survival. So these are my strain. I'll just put strain here. It lets me know I can put my allocate my skill dots into these skills. They're accessible to me, but I do not have to put uh, all my points into each one of them, and I don't even think I can because I think I probably get around three skill dots, and I'm going to have four skills in just string. And then I am also going to make sure that my character is has the lineage Yorker, but I'm not going to go too much into that because I feel like that's. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were saying how, you, or maybe it was the. Uh, I was listening to podcasts because I I listen to a lot of stuff outside of this. And I remember someone saying, yeah, if you want to go into a lineage, you can choose to go into a li lineage later on. So in any case, that's from my strain path. And I go back to my other stuff here. So I can choose uh, a roll path. So my roll path. 64, I could be a caravan driver, an engineer, a guard, a gunslinger, a Jones. What's a Jones? 
The old ancestors left behind literal treasure troves of gear, technology, and scrap. Most of these things are buried under the said Zed infested grave mind protrusions, radiation fields as far as the eye can see, or deserts only survivable to the worst mutated creatures. But those things will never stop, have never stopped her before, and they sure aren't going to stand in her way for her next dig. So these are, it sounds a little bit like a scavenger, but Jones, okay. The mad scientist, the politician, the primitive, the publican, which is, seems to be a bit of a good gossip. He works for the bar scene, barkeeper. Oh, I am, I am one hundred percent a publican. Not, not, not the other one. Just publican. Just that phrase there. I run a bar, or I was, I am a brewer of some, some type. So this gives me access to the. Oh, there's the strain. So I can put the strain as townies. And then my role is going to be public and, and society. I haven't chosen society yet. But as far as the skills go, I'm going to have another thing for my role for, excuse me. For my role, I'm going to be able to grab the close combat Oh no, not close combat. Academics again. So there's a little bit of crossover. I'm going to be able to have culture, empathy, and subterfuge. So I do have a little bit of crossover already with some of these. Double checking some things. And double checking the stream because I want to just say hi to all the people that are on the stream. Got a lot of things going on in the background here, so I'm just making sure that I can see your guys, your guys' lovely comments when they come rushing in. Hi, Chandra Magic. It is always wonderful to see you in these uh, Twitch streams. Have you been fam have you been familiar with uh, Dystopian Rising Evolution before? <laughs> okay. Um, so while I wait for that. To catch up, I am going to go into the uh, society path. Um, society is a group of like-minded people working together to achieve a goal within a specific dystopian rising world. That may be anything from ensuring the purity of a strain's bloodline to assassinating bad actors to ensure a settlement's safety. A society could also be a creator of fate. Okay, so there are the Adder Cods. He's a mole, an informant, the biggest information gathering network in the wastes. They are his only true family, and he would do anything to keep them safe. Uh, restriction, it is specifically for the Lascarian strain, so I can't take it. There's a black market, so it could be someone who traffics in illicit goods. That's a reasonable one. Rafters of Alexandria, knowledge is power. He knows more than anyone else and has dedicated his life to collecting and protecting knowledge. He doesn't hoard knowledge, though. He uses it to make lives better and advance technology. That's an interesting one. I kind of like that. It does confuse me a little bit when in the uh, preface they said that technology only really hits at the it's at the uh, like industrial revolution era. Anything that remains of actual technology is usually like destroyed by an EMP blast or fried. So so Chandra Magic says, I know of it, but I will be honest. I don't have much interest in an apocalyptic setting, so I haven't really looked into it. Yeah, it's like it's definitely honestly with Story Path. There's so much good stuff coming out with Story Path, and I know Onyx Path is known for being like the horror Chronicles of Darkness, World of Darkness uh, game developers, at least in the past few years and decade probably now. Uh, but Dystopian Rising is post apocalyptic. If you want to play something that is more uh, medieval fantasy, they're going to have At the Gate soon. If you want to play something that's a little bit more survival underground, Fantasy, you've got the world below. Then you have anything sci-fi, you have Trinity Continuum. Anything um, like sort of, I guess you would call it urban mythology, you have Scion. And then there's other stuff that may or may not exist, I don't know. 
but there's a lot of stuff that I'm like I'm excited for in the future of Onyx Path to see where they go. Uh, you have you also have all the stuff that's like uh, Pugmire through that's uh, fantasy but with animals or humanist human human like animals. It, it's always interesting to see that stuff. And long story short. If you want to play a game in story, if you want to play any setting, Story Path has some game line either that exists or is going to exist that covers that system. And it has the D10 system that the storyteller, or that's similar to the storyteller or storytelling system that I really appreciate. Check it out. <laughs> There's my plug for the for the uh, for the advertising. Or, or what have you. <laughs> there are a lot of different uh, society paths here. You've got the Creed, who um, is someone who's basically part of a religious sect or a cult. You have the Crimson Cross Caravans, which are basically trading caravans. You have the Dead Sight Society, who are psionicists. Uh, or no, not psionicists. They will do anything in their power to destroy psionicists. And then there is the Fast Track, who are taking part in ending slavery, which is awesome. It will do it by any means necessary to stamp it out. You have the Lineage League, which this sounds like it is pure blood strains only. They are elitists and they are trying to get rid of anything. When others speak of unimaginable wealth, they only need to look at him to see the example. He is a scion of the elites and uses his vast wealth and power to chronicle everything there is to know about the pure blood families of the wastes. So they're making like line lineage lines, they're tracking it down. So they're more like ancestry.com. Lone Star Rangers, she knows an outlaw when she sees one, she isn't afraid to put a bullet in their head. She's a good as good as a ten armed fight, ten armed fighters, or is it a single fighter with ten arms? You never know. <laughs> and her driving force is ensuring that the American way of life, the American way of life, there is no A at the beginning of that. So you got your uh, American strain only. What's the one that's for my guys? What are what are for the townies? Mercy's chosen. Uh, dedicated life to eradicating sickness and disease. Murder Inc. She want she waits in disguise, pretending to be just another townsfolk. She does not let her training slip through. For when the order comes to execute someone, she needs to be fast and effective. So you can be part of an assassins type guild. There's the postal service. Obviously, you're in the middle of the wastelands. You need to have reliable post. Something that I am not having at the moment. Thank you, Chandra Magic. Uh, yeah, you agree. There's a bunch of OPP stuff in the pipeline that I cannot wait for. I'm excited. I I don't know anything about it, about what's in the pipeline. I, I really like, even if someone was going to tell me about anything, I'd make sure to like preface saying, hey, I don't want to know anything that the public doesn't want to know at least at this moment, this moment in my YouTubing and Twitch streaming career. I like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for all the stuff down there. I really want to like press and see if I can do, like, I really like the interviews that, um, I forget who does it on the stream, but someone else does interviews on the stream. And I really like to branch out to do some stuff similar for my own channel. Maybe we have uh, priests of the sound. The beat is all within us. The beat must go on. She is dedicated to ensuring radio waves can be heard clear and true across the wastelands. And she's willing to fight for the beat or die with a song on her lips. These are like, this is like your post-apocalyptic bard. I only know of the stuff they report in their monthly round, round up and meeting notes. Monday meeting notes. Yeah. The Monday meeting notes are awesome. Um, I honestly think if if there's if you don't like listening to podcasts, if you don't like listening to Twitch streams, which if you're not listening, if you don't like 
Twitch streams or YouTube. Why are you even watching this right now? Oh no, the metrics. Uh, but uh, Mon Monday meeting notes on onyxpath.com are a great way of uh, figuring out what's going on in the future. They talk about a lot of things. And honestly, I think, and this is just my personal opinion, don't quote me on this as far as like an official thing from Onyx Path, but I think the Monday meeting notes are where if anything happens, just check if, if you're worried about something being released or you want to see if something's being released, just look at the Monday meeting notes. They have everything there that you need to know about what's going on in Onyx Path. Uh, podcasts are wonderful. The Onyx Path asks I listen to every week. And I would always check, I would always check in with those two areas for official words on anything and then of course there is the onyx path con which i need to plug which is going to be uh june and i'm double checking the dates we've got it for june june 14th i think if it's not in here it's not in here but i have my little notepad here of well, uh, email about stuff. Onyx PathCon, I believe, is the 14th. I have it in my uh, June 14th. I have it in my calendar, and if it's not that, I'm screwed because <laughs> I have it written down wrong. In any case, yeah, Definitely have become more of a fanboy of Onyx Path over the last few years, just because I really enjoy what they do. And in case any other stuff that's coming up for Onyx Path, uh, crowdfunding stuff is potential. I think Pugmire, not Pugmire, uh, Curious Cats of Mao just finished or has just finished. So there's not much there. There's the Onyx Path Gaming Weekend, which is going to be the 26th of April. So if you want to check that out, please do. Uh, the game night has the game night usually has people who are running games through Start Playing. I don't know if anyone's running Dystopian Rising right now, but it's a good time if you want to run a game. You can even do that yourself, probably. There's some promotions going on for Dark Eris 2 of Chronicles of Darkness and some screens. There's 75% off at Indie Press Revolution, as well as some other stuff going on there. And if I do link, if I do this command, I should be able to set you guys up with a bunch of stuff. Okay. You can follow Onyx Path across social media. Visit our link tree at Linktree. We go that's my plugging for the moment i don't think there's anything else i need to plug uh, okay where were we on far as so social stuff going uh we've got the uh Sionicist guild who are being a psionicist dangerous so you join a guild for mutual protection and survival uh a road crew so when you want to do a race He's one who finds the worst routes and the hardest to find waypoint and stocks those with munition and then stocks those with munitions and resources the racers need to try and survive. Oh, so he's the one that supplies the racers. Okay. You have the scythe, who are the undead the undead plague the world, and while many survivors know how to fight them, few actively seek them out. There are some who are dedicated to wiping out every Zed everywhere. Perfectly reasonable creed. Then you've got the servants of egress. To defy the gods who brought hell upon the earth, he must show others pain and suffering. He was happy, happily taken on this burden and gleefully tortures his victims to bring enlightenment to the weak. Not something I would do, but that is restricted to the followers of the final night creed. You have the servants of the undying. The path to her immortality is through the grave mind. If she can only understand it better, she can bend its power to her will and live forever. That is my phone, which I should put on Do Not Disturb.
That always happens at the most inopportune time. You have the settlements who are people who thrive in one settlement. You might have come from somewhere else, but as far as anyone else is concerned, she's a local. She came from before the war, stayed afterward, and everyone seems to know her, for better or for worse. I mean, that's a good one. Um, the steamers. The rails run on time and stay clear through this team's constant dedication. Together they ride the rails and clear the way uh, to ensure the rail barons get their goods on time. I like trains. You have a train path right there. I might take it. And then there's the trade union. She is a senator and an investor. She knows the commerce and capitalism are what makes the world go round. There are just so many good ones. I am... I'm surprised there isn't one for each screen. But that makes sense because if... There's just so many factions maybe that they decided to like just keep it simple. And I am still getting texts. At this point, I would like to say to my lovely wife, thank you for texting me. I love you dearly. <laughs> She's a sweet one. Black market example connections bartender. I would like to be kind of... There's so many interesting ones here that I'm like half interested in. Uh, I like the Lone Star Rangers, but um, honestly, it's restricted so i can't take it murder inc could i do murder inc yeah i think i'm going to go with murder inc being an assassin is always fun but then i'm a bartender assassin and maybe that's not something i want to uh oh god it's so difficult to say I think I'm going to go black market. Black market. Stick to that. Yeah, black market. If you're part of the trade group, if you were a bartender, black market sounds a lot better to me, at least. So I'll put that down here as my society is black. Or the black market. I'm a bit of a criminal. Bit of a scamp. So we've chosen our paths. Roll paths do not have dots. Each path consists of the following elements a short description, four skills associated with the path, um, strain and society paths gain access to a community contact, two edges associated with the path. You, um, Strain paths give a single edge, and the other comes from the strain's lineage. So do I just get those, those edges? I might just get those edges. So if I, if it seems like... Characters gain all six edges offered by each path. If the edge has variable dots, the character gains the first dot and the edge. If two paths would give the character the same age edge, gain an additional dot if variable. If not, then pick a different edge of the same or lesser value. This edge substitution is subject to story guide approval. Characters must meet the prerequisite for all edges by the end of character creation. Oh, I have to meet the prerequisite for all of them? Okay. I gain four additional dots of edges, which can be come from outside the paths, but must follow the normal prerequisites. Up to three of those edges can be faithful or psi edges. I do like psionics, but I also know that psionics is a little different here than what I'm used to. God, Chandra Magic, I wish I saw your thing about the bartender assassin. He's so bad at mixing drinks, they kill people. <laughs> that would be a good one. That would be a good character. So, 
we've got that going on. So I get all six of the edges. So I have to go back to the paths just to see what I've got. So if I go back to townies. So for a townie, I get crowd pleaser edge. I'm going to go over the edges afterwards just to. Just close current. Just to sort of give you guys the rundown. And that way I don't have to rely too much on stuff. So we've got crowd freezer. And then I am going to be a Yorker. Uh, which is, in my opinion, close to New Yorker. So, and I was close to New York, so maybe too pissed to care. I wonder if it's the British too pissed or if it's pissed off. It's probably pissed off. Uh, there's a strain condition. I don't know if the strain condition has a place on the character sheet. It doesn't look like it. So we have that, that one listed. What other edges did I get for making my character? I got the other paths. So I did a strain path and I've got this one. Okay, roll path. So as the publican, I am going to get the edges of entertainer and time sense. Okay. Time if it's if it's what I think it is, that type of thing is always so weird for me. Having an ability that's like, you're good at time. You're good at cracking time is always something. So for Black Market, I get Mentor and Tavern Brawler. So being a publican didn't give me Tavern Brawler, but being a Black Marketeer does. So I am fine with that. And what else we got here? So we, we have the six edges, and then I get four extra edges. So I'm just going to put one, two, three. Three, four. Double check that I'm not making a mistake on that. Um, choo -choo -choo -choo, edges, 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 edges. You gain a four additional dots of edges. Okay, so dots. Okay. So for the skills, you have sixteen skills that skill dots with each skill rated from zero to five. These skills represent your character's knowledge, what they can do. Gain three dots to distribute among the four skills for each path. And I forgot to put down the dang path for being a black marketeer. Uh, so athletics is one. So if I do society, spelling society wrong, I know. So I'm going to get culture, persuasion, and uh, subterfuge. So it's already telling me that, like, it's already kind of telling me that my character is going to have to is 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 going to get subterfuge and like, academics at some point. I mean, I don't have to take them but it seems like it's kind of shifting me to that perspective. Okay. So three skill points for each of those. So if we go here, three skills for each one. Um, so I'm going to take one point in academics. Let's let's do the strain first. So strain, I don't have firearms or any sort of melee stuff. So immediately I'm going to put um, two skill points into close combat because I need something there just to be effective in a combat. And I am kind of a brawler, so it makes sense that I would have two in there. Uh, culture. Uh, oh, strain, strain. I have one more dot in strain. So we could take Academics, Subterfuge, or Survival. I'm going to take Subterfuge. 
I don't think I need that much survival because I am a townie and I'm kind of used to being in a more town-like environment, city environment, as opposed to being out in the wastes. Now we go to roll. Culture, empathy, subterfuge. I'm going to put another dot into subterfuge. And I'm going to put one dot into my academics. And I'll put a dot into empathy. Now society. I could put another dot into uh, academics. I could put a dot into culture. Which I might. I might put a dot into culture. And then I have persuasion. Definitely put a dot into persuasion and a dot into subterfuge. Now let's count those up so that I have nine. I have... I missed a dot subterfuge. So now I have nine. Yeah. Now I have nine. A player may not use dots from one path for skills associated with the path. Oh, so it's 15, so I have six extra dots. So I'm going to put an extra dot into subterfuge, so I'm down to five. I'm going to put a dot into, I'm going to put two dots into close combat. Always good to have some fight in it. Uh, one dot into empathy, one dot into persuasion. Have one more left. Could put in lore, I could put in leadership, firearms. I'm gonna put it into empathy. I'm gonna just go full full um social with a little bit of close combat and academics tossed in there. Now I can do the attributes. You have nine attributes. You have the three arenas, you have excuse me, the Six dots for the primary attribute, four dots for the middle rank one, etc. So my cunning, my 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 might is going to have two dots in it. I'm very mighty. Or actually, let's let's do one dot in might, one dot in stamina. That way, my character is a little bit spread out in that regard. I have four dots, which I'm going to put into my mental skills. Um, I, Sorry, I apologize. I said I'll put I put two dots into my physical skills and they all start at one. So I put might at two and stamina at two and left dexterity at one. For my mental, I'm going to put four dots in there and I'm going to up my cunning, because that's what I usually like having high cunning. I'm gonna put one dot into resolve and do it and one dot into intellect. So I'm a little bit spread out in there. Not too much. And then I am going to have to give myself a lot of dots into my primary, which is going to be social, which is going to be six dots. I'd love to have something at three dots to begin with. I'm going to put my presence at four dots. I'm going to put my manipulation at one dot and my composure at or sorry, at uh, two dots and my composure at three dots. So presence at four, manipulation two, composure at three. There we go. You have an approach. Your approach, every character has a favorite approach or a preferred way of approaching uh, a problem. So I can put that into my, I'm going to put my favorite approach into forces, which is going to give me an additional dot to each attribute in the favored approach. So my presence is going to be five, my might is going to be three, and my intellect is going to be three. Which is a pretty strong character. That That's a pretty good spread for me. I always find that when I do stuff like this, my characters tend to be not as they they tend to be a little bit better than you'd think just by looking at the character sheet often. Because 
but also they were very glass cannon-y. Uh, Chandra Magic chiming in to say a bartender's sig signature weapon is a bar spoon. I used to play in a lot of war games, and they used to give out the wooden spoon as the last place award. I never got the wooden spoon. I tried a few times. Never did. I once got to the, so far into the bomb of a tournament, I was like, okay, I'm just going to play for the spoon. I'm going to do the worst I could possibly do. And someone did worse than me. And I'm like, how? How? Never, never found out how. So we just finished the character sheet. Now it says here that you should have a total of 24 attribute dots by the end of the game, by the end of character creation. So I have 9, 14, 19, 24. I have 24. Okay. Uh, my starting gear is coming from my roll path. I do have the four additional dots of edges that I need to do. Um... The player has additional five pieces of gear not listed within the character roll path. None of these can be higher than tier, tier 3. Ideally, the character should have at least one weapon, one piece of armor. It's tough to survive in the waste. Okay, so if I go back to my path here, my roll path is that of the publican. So the publican has a has three UP, which is um, UPP, which is the uh, universal, um, like, uh, currency. And then I have a heavy jacket. They said I get extra crap. Five pieces of gear, so I have five more. They do have example pieces of gear, which we have 15 minutes left, so let's just take a look at that for the moment. Uh, various melee gear, which is for being a good person. So if I look at the uh, character, the the table here of all the different melee weapons because I could grab guns but I'm not good at guns <laughs> I'm gonna go with melee um, I can go for any tier 3 or lower melee weapon there's stuff like the shiv scrap knuckles which seem to be like brass knuckles but made out of scrap a scrap knife which honestly what's the difference between a scrap knife and a shiv probably about the same except one's higher quality and, and sat-wise, the scrap knife is better than the shiv. We have the cleaver, claw hammer, crowbar, slugville bat, whip, cane, staff, trench knife, man, uh, machete, hand axe, scrap sword. Oh, scrap sword is once you get into the tier four, which I can't take. They have knuckles. They have brass knuckles that are made of shotgun shells or some sort of... Thing that's like that where if i punch someone i blow up <laughs> it blows up in their hand or something that's that seems crazy i have no idea what this is but it sounds amazing uh it is a tier five and i can't take a tier five so but that sounds awesome uh i'll i'll take i'll take the uh machete though machete If you're familiar with Trinity Continuum or any other story path game, the machete, uh, it's lethal, it's, it has melee, it's versatile, it also has something called messy, which I don't know what it is, as it's tag. And it has an enhancement bonus too. It's pretty good as far as weapon goes. Enhancements only go up to three, it seems like, in this. Except for explosives, which can... A nuke is an enhancement five weapon. It is a baby nuke. I don't know, man. Now, I have a heavy jacket. But I'm guessing that must be a leather jacket, not like 
something else. Because as far as I can tell, there is no tag. There is no named armor for, for Heavy Jacket. So we'll say Heavy Jacket is actually Leather Jacket. And say that comes from my character sheet. I have four things left. So I could take better better armor. I could take a vehicle, which I don't have any piloting, so that doesn't make sense. Medical supplies though. I'll I'll definitely take some medical supplies. So tier three, antibiotics, rad poison, hearing aid, rebuff. It does look like there are kind of parody medical stuff that you can take. Uh, bandages. I'll take bandages. Bandages. Uh, antibiotics. Oh, I have to take hooch. Turlet hooch is the best. So I'm going to take some tur turlet hooch. And I can have some tech. Um, so bandages, antibiotics, toilet hooch, and a machete. Um, oh, I should have quality rations. <laughs> or, if we're going out into the waste, I probably need some sort of, uh, like, bunk, like a, a sleeping bag or something. There's probably a sleeping bag in here. A looter sack. A-frame tent. Yeah, let's just put A-frame tent. There's my gear. Oh, uh, weapon is the machete. Armor is the leather jack. Now we have 10 minutes left. We need to go over the edges, and I need to make sure that my character isn't too crappy. <laughs> because I can't have edges if I can't. I can't have an edge if I don't have the prerequisite for it. So crowd pleaser just has the townies lineage, a townies lineage as a prerequisite. Um, you're surrounded by people day in day out. Uh, whenever your character is in a crowded area, such as a bar, market, or crowded room, you gain a plus two enhancement to shift the atmosphere of the room. That's a pretty good one, and it's a two dot one. Um, then we have two pissed to care, uh, which is my Yorker strain. Yorkers are notoriously angry, and that anger helps your character push through the pain that she would feel. Um, whenever your character takes an injury condition, she suffers one lower penalty than she normally would, and when she suffers the bruise condition, she takes no penalty. So that's awesome. Um, that one is another 2.1. I'm an entertainer. I'm guessing... I'm, I'm trying to make sure... I have time sense, time sense here. That's a 1.1. One one. Uh, your character has a strong sense of time. You can determine what time it is, even if the place has no national in, natural indicator of the passage of time. Pretty standard as far as the time merit go time sensing merit goes in these types of games. Then we have the I'm guessing Tavern Brawler. Nope. It's not in the physical. What about social edges? I have I have Entertainer as a social edge. So that's a one dot one. Um it has three dot one to three dots, but I get only the one dot version at character creation. So I can I I can gain an enhancement equal to the dots in this edge to change the atmosphere of an area using entertainment. Uh, people may ask your character to perform at a moment's notice. If she doesn't deliver, it draws the ire of everyone expecting a show. Let's say my character is a bartender and they're an entertainer by telling stories. I 
I have the one dot of the mentor mentor edge, which means your character's mentor is someone moderately important or powerful who makes regular who takes regular interest in her. They can teach you you edges that you might need a path to teach her for. Additionally, the mentor can handle minor access, like short-term access to a moderately restricted area. Now, this I got from my societal path, so black market. So it's a criminal. Let's say this this guy's probably my is is my fixer type of person who helps me sell my stuff and get my stuff when I need to get my stuff. Uh, it's not a one-way street for having the mentor itch, so I'll have to like recoup that type of stuff. Oh. Prerequisites. Crap, I, I forgot to look at the prerequisites. I have an appropriate path for that one. That's fine. Um, entertainer, I have an appropriate path. Um, time sense doesn't have any restriction. Shouldn't have a restriction. And the other two just had the restriction of that particular... Excuse me. That particular um, thing. So I look at Tavern Brawler and I'm like, oh, this is a great skill. I have Might, I have Close Combat. It doesn't use Might as the prerequisite. It uses Dexterity, so I need to lower my stamina by one and up my Dexterity by one so that I'm at two for Dexterity. And that way I get Iron Fists. Your character knows when to hit them where it hurts. When making an unarmed strike, gain enhancement equal to your character's range in this edge. So I'll gain plus one... Um, enhancement for punching someone where where it hurts them. When it gets higher, I can get um, defensive fighting, which means I get a plus one. Uh, increase the difficulty of my attack roll by plus one in exchange for adding plus one to my dodge for the next turn. And then there's defensive movement, where my character knows how to move to minimize damage. I gain two points of soft armor by moving in ways that minimize the impact. So it's a way of avoiding getting hit in melee. We're getting close here. I have four dots left. I want to have something that is heavy handed. I can increase the force of my blow. Oh yeah, I'm taking heavy handed. And I'll take it at, I'll take it at, uh, basically, Heavy Handed gives me a tag called Weighted, which if it's the same as Trinity Continuum, um, which I'm double checking here for the weapon tags, but if I'm right, it means I can punch someone and push them. And if you have a Weighted tag, Weighty. No. Weighted. Page 80. The weighted tag isn't in... Isn't in the... Weapons tags. Okay, that's, that's an issue. Um... I'm going to still take it. <laughs> I know what the weighted tag should be. <laughs> if the weapon already possessed, then it gains the effect of the tag twice, but this tag cannot reduce the number of successes necessary for the knockdown stun. Okay, it doesn't push you, but it gives you the knockdown stun. I'm going to take striking at two dots. Which gives me a plus two enhancement to social actions. And then I have one dot extra, which I'm going to use to take the Tavern Brawler just so I can do more, I get more enhancement in fighting. And if I'm right, that should be the end of my character creation. Um, 
take note of the strain condition and write it down in its effects when it triggers. Um, I have three levels of injury, one bruised, one injured, and one maimed. Um, burnt. You have three levels of stress. Troubled, distraught, haunted. Only only characters with faithful or psi edges gain an additional stress condition. Okay, so resolve three, I would get more, but I just get the three. That's interesting. You have a uh, mental health thing, kind of like uh, Call of Cthulhu and stuff. Your defense always starts at one. That's fine. That's pretty typical. And then I have my connections based on my paths. Which I have my fixer as my mentor. Um, I'll probably have another black market society person who's like an informant. And for townies, I'm probably friends with a mayor or somebody. Because I was a bartender. And we're getting late into this. Honestly, if you're pretty good at character creation you can boil this down pretty quickly i kind of wish i maybe there is a quick character creation rule thing in here i don't see it but that's fine um i do i do get four or five for any skill with four or five dots take a special uh, characters start with a single skill trick, which must be first skill. I have three or three or more. Uh, skill tricks. Du -du 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 -du. Close combat skill trick. Uh, melee weapon expert. Uh, wide strike. I can be skilled at hitting multiple people. Uh, when a character is using a complex action. Okay, no. I, I don't like that. I don't like mixed actions, really. It's It makes sense. So the I, the skill tricks for close combat are about mixed actions to more people. I am not one for using mixed actions, and I feel like I'll forget that a lot. So I think I might stick to... What's my character sheet say? What do I have four dots in? Subterfuge. Um, escape. Yeah, escape's a good special uh, skill trick, so I'll I'll put escape. Escape um, before making an athletics roll to run away. Uh, activate the skill trick to add bonus dice equal to your subterfuge skill to the roll. I don't have athletics. Um, how about just escape bonds? I can spend one momentum to slip out of any binding. Escape bonds. That's a good skill to have. And then I do have specialties, which will have to be uh, for close combat. It will be uh, unarmed. Um, maybe I can get something in that. And subterfuge. We'll just say um, subterfuge is stretching the truth. The white lie and that's it now this character i don't have a name yet for him i like i always like wayland the character name i'm gonna leave the wayland in there that's what we got here we've got wayland the bartender black marketeer who uses a machete <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video that we got up to the end of character creation. I didn't really go into the psionic stuff, even though I said I would, but that's just I feel like we were running a little bit low on time. There can be some experience costs associated with changing things up on your character. Uh, 10 experience to add a dot to a single attribute, 3 for an edge, um, 5 for a skill, 
five for a skill trick. A specialty is three XP and a path is 15. Um, you do get one XP for completing a short-term goal, um, two for completing a long-term goal, and then completing a group story is three, reaching a story milestone is one XP. So that's it for uh, Dystopian Rising Evolution. Revol Dystopian Rising Evolution. I I might do another episode, I'm not sure. I didn't cover a lot of the lore stuff before, but who knows? I might be doing something else next week. Thank you all for watching. I finished my water that was colored purple. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one. Oh, and thank you, Hot Dog Wizard, for subscribing at Tier 1. You are subscribed for 40 months. Congratulations. Hot Dog Wizard was someone I remember seeing a while ago. I feel like this is not the first time that a Hot Dog Wizard has appeared in the stream. <laughs> thank you, Chandra Magic. You enjoy your night as well. And thank you, Hot Dog Wizard, for showing up so late. And it's perfectly fine for being so late. You can check out the Dystopian Rising uh, Evolution. You could check up the Dystopian Rising Evolution video I did last week. It's currently up on YouTube. I had fun re-listening re to it earlier because I wanted to prep myself for this. Uh, I did a video for April Fool's Day called Mortal the Morning where I covered uh, a joke splat for Chronicles of Darkness, if people want to check that out, you can catch it over on my YouTube channel. I try and do something once a week. I'm trying to figure out what to do this week, but check it out. I'll post the link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a good night and enjoy yourselves. Many worlds, but one path. And I switch to the pre-roll. <laughs>